paranormal in Pennsylvania may discuss topics such as suicide, murder, and other potentially upsetting things. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Paranormal in Pennsylvania, where we discuss history and hauntings. Today's story takes us a little south of Pittsburgh. I'm Sarah. And I'm Erica. Let's get into it. This season, we're being sponsored by our friends at Haunted US. They travel the country bringing you real stories of American hauntings every Thursday at hauntedus.com. So, the Hayes Mansion slash Larry's Roadhouse. I am pumped. Yes. (laughs) And this one was under our radar, under our radar, under our nose for so long. Yeah. Season four, the end of season four. This is like 15 minutes from the city. Yes. And we had no clue. And I just stumbled across it. I've driven through that tunnel so many times yeah i've never even seen it like i've never even turned my head to this which you know just proves i'm a good driver not distracted (laughs) however (laughs) i've never even turned my head slightly to the side to see it right and i've been here for what six years right it's crazy i am excited for this one so the hayes mansion which then became larry's roadhouse is what we're covering Hmm. First, to clear up some confusion, because I wrote the history section completely incorrectly the first time, (laughs) there are two Hayes mansions in Pittsburgh. One is like a historical mansion you can tour, and one is Hayes Mansion turned Larry's Roadhouse. Gotcha. Different families, seemingly not related. Which, I get. Hayes, that's a pretty common last name. Is it? I feel, isn't it? Maybe it's not. Is it? David's saying yes. Okay, I'm wrong. (laughs) I guess. So, okay. The other Hayes Mansion is in, like, Munhall uh, area. Okay. So, yeah. But you can, apparently it's beautiful and you can tour it. This location is located at 1900 Whitehead Street or 1766 Ballinger Street. There, it's, because it's on, like, a corner. Yes. It has two addresses. Yes. Which, I just want to say, that street was... A- Let me just say, it was the thinnest street I've ever been on. And at the time, I didn't know that we could pull into the parking lot of Mm -hmm. the mansion. So I did like a full K turn before you got there, thank God, because I don't think anybody saw and like hit someone's bushes. (laughs) Yeah, I pull up. And to be fair, to get into the parking lot, it was very steep. And I did regret it when I was trying to leave. But when I parked and finally checked my phone just seeing the text from you that said i hit a bush what can i say well i expected like i like hit a bush and you were like i just kind of turned into it but i feel bad and to be fair there is a residential home right next to it yes so you're trying to be really respectful but it is steep 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 i don't know how cars got there when it was a functioning restaurant i don't know either i don't know Apparently, it was a really, really popular restaurant, though. But before that, the it was built in 1850 and was the home of Jacob and Mary Smith Hayes. Jacob was a prominent landowner and the father of Milton Hayes, who became the owner of the Pittsburgh and Castle Shannon Railroad. Interesting. Yeah, and something that, I mean, I knew, kind of, but the recent, like, old railroad money has really proven, if you were wealthy in the 18 late 1800s you owned a railroad because like the ace of packer house linden hall or like you were involved yeah yeah they're all these millionaires and billionaires or it's like railroads yeah it's the way to be i mean agreed it's like monopoly yes (laughs) so the mansion had quite a history after it was a residential home it was a rest stop along the rail line for passengers heading to downtown pittsburgh because again, it's like 20 minutes, 15 minutes outside the city. So it would be the last stop before you got to the downtown station. It was also a place to rent carriages for funerals, which I- Interesting. Yeah, I never thought as a business before. No. But I guess you need it. Carriages for few. So does that mean, because now they have hearses, right? Right. So does that mean that the carriages were separate? Like you had to- Yeah, like before you would have had a hearse, you would need a- big carriage to pull the coffin 
casket, I think, is the proper uh, term. I mean, that does make sense, but yeah. not something I've thought about before. Right? What a business. <laughs> Railroads and carriage rentals for funerals. <laughs> and it's rumored that it was secretly a brothel at one point. Ooh. Which I feel like is a common, kind of common theme that we run into with these places. People are like, and it was a brothel. Maybe people were just like having sex in the bathroom and then someone was like, it's a brothel. (laughs) I mean, I would believe that about when it was Larry's Roadhouse, not when it was like a carriage rental you know what, that's a fair point who is who is getting together at a carriage re- yeah so it was purchased and renovated by larry vichy or vichy i'm guessing vichy uh in 1984 and became larry's roadhouse until 2013 so 30 years almost yeah and that's really recent to me yeah like i feel 2013 in 2014, the building was sold to an investment company that was under, going to undergo a comprehensive remodeling effort to make it into an event space, which I think is kind of a cool idea because it's this old historical mansion. I think it could be really cool. But they ran out of money and stopped remodeling. Which is sad because I agree. When we were looking in the windows, there were beautiful brick walls that they could have really done up, I think, mm-hmm. in, like in, yeah, in, in the like remodel. The, the second floor overlooking that bar area. Yes. Because Erica was like, oh, I see a staircase. And so we were able to, through looking through the windows, we could see like kind of piece out the yeah. floor plan. And so today it is abandoned and for sale. And it is next to a residential property. So we were a little hesitant to spend a ton of time there just because, you know, people live there. We don't want to be rude. Right. Now, the paranormal part of the story. Apparently, there's a lot of deaths associated with this property, which is strange given its past. Yes, not a lot of like, well, you know, when things change over, usually we've seen maybe like four or five places, different places. And then it's like, okay, I guess like different histories. But I agree. Like, I think the history that this place has doesn't seem like the place. Right. I mean, again, because the whole Larry's Roadhouse thing was so recent yeah. that it doesn't feel like it should be part of the history, even though it is. Right. Yeah, but also you wouldn't suspect someone's dying there when it's Larry's Roadhouse. You wouldn't suspect someone's dying at a carriage rental place. Right. So it had to have been, I guess if it was a rest stop, it could have been then, and even when it was a residential home. Right. But the most prominent is known as the judge, who I think was also the name of the Carnegie Library spirit. I think you're right. Which yeah. was, is a throwback. So apparently, the judge died on the property, and there's some debate, but many people say, local legend, is that he hung himself in the third floor rafters. And he said for that reason to haunt the upper floor and become very aggressive whenever anyone enters his space. So I guess now I'm wondering, like, what part of the place was Larry's ra- Roadhouse? Like, was it just the bottom floor or were people up on the third floor hanging out? I don't know, because that's what I was trying to think. So we saw, obviously, the first floor was used for bar and entertaining. Right. But it looked like they would have had tables on that second floor. But then the third, I'm wondering if that was just storage or an attic. Ah, you know? that would make sense. I don't know. And I think it makes sense for a spirit that committed suicide to be aggressive yes they were probably upset in life they probably just want to be left alone Mm -hmm. they don't want anyone in their space so that makes sense to me yes definitely the other spirit is that of a young woman some say she was pregnant some people say she wasn't that fell down the stairs and she is seen wandering throughout the home aimlessly that also makes sense like her wandering around i think but so sad those stairs were really steep they were i mean like just like the driveway yeah it was it's unusually steep for a set of stairs and okay falling down stairs is like a recent big fear of mine i don't know why yes but for you too (laughs) yeah because it's so like you're so out of control yeah you just gotta hope you're fine right so yeah i can't imagine and that one's sad yes I mean, not that the judge isn't sad, but more sad. Right. 
visitors in general report quite a few full body apparitions. And so there's the judge, there's this female spirit, but there's also just seemingly random people. And to me, it could be, you know, members of the Hayes family that are coming back. Maybe it could even be, I was thinking, people that had funeral carriages that they rented from there. So there's like oh. some association because yeah. it didn't really give any description of what these apparitions would look like. Right. No, I think that does. I mean, we said before earlier that like it doesn't seem like a place where a lot of deaths would happen. But mm-hmm. I do think that the history makes it so that it it is a place where spirits would return. Yeah, I agree. Hi, listeners. We're so excited to tell you about our partnership with Haunted U.S. Haunted U.S. is an online publication that brings you credible articles on the history and specific paranormal claims of haunted locations across the country. We've even used them to research some of our episodes. Visit hauntedus.com for new haunted places every Thursday. When it was Larry's Roadhouse, apparently strange occurrences happened all the time. And the employees would say it visitors would say it all around which kind of makes me wish i knew about it and could have eaten at it before it closed but oh well some examples were objects disappearing electrical disturbances footsteps being heard and then the apparitions being seen at first i was like okay it's from the 1850s electrical disturbances we always you know whatever yes but then i was thinking If it's a restaurant that you're actively running and you had repeat electrical issues, you would get that fixed. Yes. uh, Yeah. You know, you just would. And then the footsteps being heard when you're alone, that makes sense, especially if there's quite a few, you know, spirits roaming there Mm -hmm. and objects disappearing. I always think is such a interesting one because we'd never know the motivation so it's like, is it the judge being like, leave, take your stuff? Right. Is it someone being like, this doesn't go here? Or is it someone being like, what is this item? You know? Yeah. I've never actually thought about that last one. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of obviously like modern day things that these spirits would never have encountered. And yeah. so it might be curiosity. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Yes. One waitress specifically claimed to have seen the figure of a Victorian woman on the steps and she eventually faded from view and this would be my understanding different than the woman that fell down the stairs that's what i was gonna ask if you thought it was the same or a different person no i think the the young woman that fell down the stairs was more recent ah okay so that one is another like resident spirit and i want to know more about her like i think it'd be cool to have an investigation here and figure out who these people actually are yes i mean since it's a Victorian woman, I'm almost um, leaning towards a member of the Hayes family. Yeah. It would be really interesting to confirm that. Right. And if that's the case, what does she think about, you know, all of the changes that have happened? I think it'd be so interesting to get that perspective. Yes. Or is she just kind of in a loop where she doesn't realize time has changed? That's actually a super, because we've talked about the residual hauntings before, and I did not think about that, but yeah, like, they wouldn't notice that things have changed. Yeah. You know, is this spirit just thinking that this is her house? Yeah. And who the heck are all these people? Right. Which, fair. (laughs) (laughs) One, the waitress also said that the candy dishes, when it was Larry's Roadhouse, were a big issue. Specifically, they would fill the candy dishes and then come back to find the candy scattered all over the floor. Which is interesting interesting to me. Yes. And they said it wasn't like the dishes were moved. They were on the exact same place in the counter. It was as if someone physically scooped the candy out of the bowl and threw it on the floor. Oh my gosh, wait. What is that? What is that? It's sort of like tarot cards mm-hmm. or like runes, but you throw something down and it scatters and it tells you. Oh, like when you do like the bone, like yes. the bones. I wonder, wow, I really didn't think about that, but that's a great idea. It's like trying to, it's like, okay, idiot, we'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> 
trying to send a message and just being like, you're only giving me candy, so this is what we're using. <laughs> I'm trying my best with these mints. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. That's a great idea. Gosh, I wish that there was like photos of it. Yeah. To see if there was letters or anything. Or a pattern in the ways they were being thrown. Yeah. Or... Yeah, it's like you look at it zoomed out. It's like an arrow pointing to something <laughs> every single time. The spirit's like, oh my God, these living people. It's so dumb. <laughs> That's a great idea. I. I feel like on some episodes, I'm like, I choose to believe that narrative. And for this one, I choose to believe that narrative. Don't know, cannot confirm. Right. But for me personally. No, it's my, that's my favorite. When yeah. spirits try to communicate, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's such an interesting way to communicate. Yes. There are also reports, like I said, of objects moving around. And these come from patrons as well as the staff. So this is a direct quote, and it's a little long, so bear with me. So start quote, there's a wall that separates the restaurant from the bar. I was playing hide and seek with my friend, another child around my age. I went to go hide up against the far right side of the wall that separates the bar and restaurant. I found that I accidentally bumped up against a picture. Not wanting to make it fall, I moved away from the wall, deciding to hide somewhere else. Minutes later, I came back past the wall and found that the picture was no longer on the far right side, but rather at the far left side. End quote. Interesting. Yes, because it's not even like they're saying, you know, it was a foot over and we right. can be like, well, from it going from one side of the room to the other side mm -hmm. is pretty undeniable. And a hanging object is what I was thinking. It's yes. not like it's, all I can think of is a candy dish as an example. It's not like the candy dish just moved from one side to the other where someone could have maybe done that in passing and you wouldn't have seen it. No one is going to take the hanging, like the hook out of the wall and rehang it without you noticing within a few minutes. Yes, that's what I was going to say is like if the whole nail or hook was right. moved, then that's just, I mean, who could do that? Yeah, and it makes me really wonder what was in the photo. Because mm. is it like a member of the Hayes family that's in the photo. It did say that there was historical photos hanging around, so it could be that maybe the Victorian woman's like, okay, you're gonna ruin this, you child. Let's move it over here and keep yeah. it safe. So I wonder. People were called out to service the building while it was Larry's Roadhouse, and they reported a series of odd knocks on walls. <laughs> Erica's absolute favorite. We hate it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's because whenever you think about knock, the concept of knocks on walls, you think that it's coming from inside the walls. I yeah. don't know why. That's what the mind defaults to. Yes. I'm like waiting for something to pop out. Right. And even though it could very well be a spirit, like knock, knock, knock. Right. They also reported strange shadows and the sound of doors slamming, even when they were alone or nearly alone in the building. And apparently all of these things were so frequent and scared them so much that they refused to return. I mean, that's intense. I, so the sound of doors slamming, I would wonder if that would be, like, I don't know, did they say what floor it was on? No. Okay, because if it was on the upper floors, there were windows yeah. that maybe could have, you know, caused the wind to come in and, and slam the doors. Mm -hmm. um, but the knocks on the walls are terrifying. And strange shadows, what does that mean? I don't know. That's like when people report outside like strange noises. I'm like, what? what is it? Right. So I don't know. But I think just the feeling of being so fearful of this place that they didn't want to come back mm -hmm. is indicative of something paranormal. That's what I was thinking. Like the overall trust your gut sensation, the instinct that they had was that they didn't like being there and something didn't want them there. Right. And we do see with renovations sometimes or like getting into fixing buildings that that can upset the spirits. So it could be something like that. Right. And the knocks on walls was interesting to me because from what we saw, it was a lot of open space. There weren't that many walls. Yeah. So maybe you're right. Maybe it was on one of the upper floors, you know? Yeah. Who knows? Some who knew the owners claim that there was actually secret passageways in the walls. There it is. 
And some claim that they're the passageways themselves are haunted and that's how the spirits move around the building which is why you only see certain apparitions at certain times because they're primarily using these passageways which i mean makes sense to me especially with it being a restaurant i'm sure obviously things were crowded and so using the passageways does make sense yeah but yeah i think that's super interesting that there are are secret passageways in the walls like when were those built what were they built for so yeah i was thinking about this allegedly there's these passageways but it could also have been a lot of times i think really wealthy people in the 18 and early 1900s had these passageway for the staff to like carry food and stuff. So I'm wondering if when they renovated the space to make it Larry's Roadhouse, they just didn't go as far to renovate behind the walls. Right, that does make sense. Which kind of begs the question to me of, could some of these things be like animals within the walls in general? I mean, the sound of knocking is a pretty distinct thing, but like some strange sounds that you might hear, is it like, rats or a raccoon that got in or something and is in the passageways right yeah definitely i mean the building's old enough that and the ground around it i think is old enough that i think there could be theoretically holes like in the bottom parts of the house to like get in yeah i would not be surprised yeah and it's like it's in a city we right cities have mice and rats and stuff so that's not a read it's just a fact Especially when it was an 1850s home, I'm yes. sure. Yes. So that is all the paranormal story. Would you go back and would you do an investigation? I would. I actually really wanted to go in. I was so sad that like... So basically, the doors to the place are on this side of the building. And you kind of go up and you hit them. But those were locked. But then there was like another set of doors on this side of the building but you couldn't get up there there was everything was blocked off basically Mm -hmm. but i really wanted to go in there was that open window Mm -hmm. and i was like again we obviously want to be respectful especially because it's a residential area but it just seems like such a cool space i know i did consider briefly asking my real estate agent to take me there that's a great idea but I don't want to waste her time. Like, yeah. we are not going to buy it. I'm sure she would because she we're really friendly. But I don't. And I also don't want to give hope to the people trying to sell it. Like, oh, someone's interested. Right. And then I'm like, let me walk around with my EMF reader and set up REM pods and cat balls. And just, I'm looking at the thing. Do I want to buy it? Yeah. Even though that was David's first reaction. So that was Zach's first reaction. Really? Yeah. When I forget how much it was now. It was like. 300,000, yeah. I think. Zach was like, maybe we should look into it. And I was like, but then we'd have to renovate it. So it's like, it's not even. Yo, but you could live in a haunted mansion. That's what I'm saying. It would be so cool. And he doesn't believe in that stuff. So he was just like a lot of acres. And I was like, great. But I would, I would be excited about it. I'm It'd team, be great. I'm team haunted Hayes <laughs> mansion for Erica and Z. I almost said your guys' last names. <laughs> um, love it. Yeah. It's not too late. Still for sale. That's true. <laughs> you could probably get a great deal. It's been on the market since 2014. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ten years. Wow. Ten years. Wow. That's a long time. I wonder why no one wants to buy it. I'm also confused because it looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks like a lot of potential. It's in kind of a weird place. That's fair. It is, being right next to residential stuff. Right. But that works out perfectly if you're going to convert it into a house. Yes. You could even convert part into a house and then have a bar. I mean, that just sounds like an A1 situation. Right and there. you could rent it out for paranormal investigations. Yes. Now it's a business. Income. There it is. <laughs> yeah. No, it'd be really cool. So I, w- I would love to do an investigation Me here. too. I think it would be really interesting. Yeah. I would really, really like to. If it is purchased, I hope that the people that purchase it are paranormal friendly. Uh, I would love to go. And I did think, you know, we could go back with more equipment and spend more time there. It's just, I felt bad. It was like a Saturday and... We both had places to be too. Yeah, we like did. Like right after, so. Yeah. So definitely an interesting story. I can't believe we didn't know about it. So again, we always say, if you have anywhere that you want us to cover, let us know. 
because we might be able to cover it faster than you think. Thank you for listening to the hauntings and history of the Hayes Mansion slash Larry's Roadhouse. Tune in next Thursday to see what history and hauntings we discuss next. Stay spooky.